Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to another video on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. So happy to have you back here for another video. So a lot of people were really resonating with the last video about the Grand Central Sun. Um, what I liked about that video is that we learned together. So I kind of talked about the points that I already knew through my own experiences. And then we channeled live some information to it on the spot, learn together a little bit more in depth about the Grand Central Sun. If you haven't checked that video out yet, make sure that you do because it's really enlightening. And like I said, a lot of you just really resonated with the information that came through. You just know when something feels right and it just felt right. So today I'm going to do something similar where we're going to talk about realms of the earth together. And we're going to talk about how much we already know. Like I'm sure a lot of you have had experiences with dropping into different realms, depending on where your frequency is. We're going to be talking about that. And then again, like the Grand Central Sun video, we're going to do some channeling to get a little bit more in depth. I actually this time have a couple of questions written down that I don't have the answers to. And hopefully we can, you know, receive some information to enlighten us. I mean, hopefully answer those questions, but we'll see what comes through. And, and that's the thing about live channeling is it's pretty exciting. Um, because I just never know. It's so spontaneous. I just truly don't know what will come through. And that being said, you know, channeling is, it is divine. Okay. So I know that a lot of, there's a lot of talk in the spiritual community um, within the last, maybe, I don't know, six months, maybe you correct me if I'm wrong about suddenly like spiritual gifts being evil or using spiritual tools being evil. Like some people like um, crystals or cards or different things like that. Um, and all of a sudden there's all of this fear surrounding using tools as well as fear surrounding our very natural gifts that are born into us. Okay. So it's not unnatural to have psychic gifts, perhaps um, like religious programming is one of the main things that have made us feel that way. And so some people seem to kind of like be, cycling back around religious programming lessons but as they're learning it they're kind of projecting right so if you see someone you know in your feed that you know maybe you used to really resonate with now talking about um like evil a lot psychic gifts being evil channeling being evil cards being evil stuff like that just know that um, well, we've all been there, like, especially if you've had a religious upbringing, like I did, um, that was just absolutely evil in their eyes. And there was no way that there was, that was okay to do at all. Um, and you have to really unbrainwash yourself and empower yourself to not need man rules, man-made rules. Like I also don't need somebody to tell me how to connect with God. Like I don't need a rule to tell me how to do that properly. I know how to do that. That is an innate gift that we all have to connect. Channeling is just that. It's just connecting. It's just praying. It's prayer. It's praying for guidance, information, knowledge. And when you set up the space correctly in the light, then you will only ever connect to those beings of light. And then if you do it the way that I do it, you specifically choose who you're connecting to. It's not just an open telephone line for anybody to talk to you. That wouldn't be ideal or um, clear, clear. It wouldn't be clarity. It could, that could get really confusing because you don't know who you're talking to. Then you don't know if you can trust the information and all of that. So that being said, I just wanted to touch on that. I felt like somebody needed to hear that. I also want you to know that if you want to learn how to use your psychic gifts that are very natural, divinely gifted to you in a safe way, then please sign up to work with me because there is still time. My course is starting on February the 2nd. And it's called Psychic Light Training. And it is all about using psychic gifts in service to the light. In fact, that's our motto at Starseed Academy is in psychic service to the light. So you can use these gifts in service. And you should. You should, right? That's what I do. My whole business is literally me using my gifts in service to others, to their light, to their health, to their healing. So it's, it's divine and it's a beautiful gift. So anyway. We're going to move on now and talk about today's video. Um, 
realms of earth. Okay, so we'll move on. But just so you know, that course, I'll leave a link in the description. You can just click on it and just read about the course and see if it resonates for you. Because if you're starting to have your psychic gifts like coming online, or if you're curious about them, or if you need help getting a handle on them, like some people have such naturally strong psychic gifts that it's overwhelming and they actually need help like controlling them or like bringing them back into balance, doing things safely, then definitely check out that course. Just read the info about it and see if that resonates for you. You still have a little bit of time and I'm so grateful and excited to all the people that have already signed up. I can't wait to get started. Okay, so realms of earth are what I want to talk about today. So what do I mean by realms of earth? I kind of view it as on earth that there are like realms, different worlds or realms stacked upon each other, like layers, energetic layers. Okay. And then, and they all of course have their own frequency. And then we are like an elevator and we go up and down depending on where we're at energetically, emotionally, spiritually, what is our emotional state at? That's what a lot of it is. And then the elevator takes us to the corresponding realm. Okay. So that is why, and I'll give you, and I'll use my own experience because I want you to know that this kind of stuff happens to every single one of us and you are not alone. So this is why when I fall into states of anger, frustration, or fear, I always have encounters with lower beings, like um, dark entities, like that realm, either like a demonic realm or just like a lower kind of, I don't know, sludgy energy realm that doesn't feel good. And that will happen when I'm in one of those states. So like if I've had, if I've been triggered in some way and I'm feeling fiery and angry and all of those things, or if I'm feeling really low, um, depressed, sick, maybe I'm sick. Um, or if I'm really anxious, like anything really that kind of like brings your frequency down that brings down the elevator. You are like this elevator. Okay. So this is just the illustration I want to use right now is visualizing yourself as an elevator. Of course, there's more to it than that. We're going to go deeper with this, but just visualize it. If it was that simple and you were just this elevator moving between realms on earth, earth holds many realms. So if you are finding yourself like experiencing psychic attacks, lower astral attacks. Like for me, when I'm in one of those low, low states and I'm down here, what I've done is now given that realm access to me. I've arrived, like I've entered that realm through my own frequency. Like it's almost like my own choice in a way, um, subconscious choice maybe. So what I'll find is, especially like if I'm about to go to bed, because that's when we're very like susceptible as we're drifting off all of the like ego layers, everything disappears. And it's really easy to have visions and your psychic gifts are like very heightened during that time. Cause like the human mind is going to sleep and now you're like just fully opening with your powers. Um, which is why that's when we astral travel too. Um, so I'll be just as I'm falling asleep in, in a state like that, I will have a vision of like something gruesome something scary, a scary face, a demon, a ghost, I don't know, something. And I usually like see it right in the room with me. So like I'll close my eyes and for that split second, all of a sudden I get this image of the last one that I had wasn't that long ago. And it was of this like demon female creature standing right beside the bed looking at me. And it was truly right there. And I knew that it's right there. So that used to get me so freaked out. And I would go on like a tailspin of uh, why is this happening to me? Like, is, is there something within my home that I need to get rid of? Um, is this, am I specifically being personally attacked? Like the why is this happening? And then you're spiraling into fear. And what that does is it keeps the elevator in the basement. Like you're just going to stay there then. When really what I need to do and what I've learned to do now is like right away, I will usually grab onto a crystal. Cause that just is a tool that I always work with. And I love crystals. They really help me to boost my high frequencies, but I will just immediately start working on bringing the elevator back up. So I will start to pray. I will connect to God source and I will ask, please raise me up to match you, raise me up to unconditional love, raise me up to unconditional compassion 
you know, help me to, to come out of this state and I'll feel myself slowly, 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 slowly starting to rise back up. And then all of that scariness will disappear. So it's really important to not feed it um, the fear and to, or frustration or victim mentality, because you're just not, you're just stalled, then you're just stuck in the elevator in the basement and you want to really just start coming back up. And the only way to do that is with your intention and with your actions. Okay. So that's the elevator kind of scenario, but another way that you could visualize these realms on earth are like radio frequencies. So wavelengths, wavelengths of energy that you can connect to. And in that instance, then it's like, if you are the radio, how sensitive is your antenna? How many channels can you tune into? Right? Because if we just did the elevator thing, which is very true, it is true. However, some people that are in the basement aren't sensitive enough of an antenna on their radio to actually see anything scary. They just would continue to feel terrible and, and not know why. And it would be like, why do I always feel so tired? Why do I always feel angry? Or why do I always feel depressed? you know, somebody that really struggles with depression, anxiety, anger, whatever it is, and never really seeming able to like heal themselves of it or come out of it. It's like their elevator stuck in the basement, but their radio antenna is not so sensitive that they actually know that's what's happened or can actually like interact with the beings in the realm that they still are in. They still are there. Right. So the radio waves thing is all about like the antenna. You are the antenna or how sensitive is the antenna that you're using. So your antennas are your psychic gifts. Okay. So, um, Claire cognizance is in your crown chakra. That's like an antenna. And what it does is it receives information and downloads through your crown chakra. You can just know things you can, it's the most powerful psychic gift that there is out of all of them. Claire cognizance is the most powerful. It is the downloads. It is the just knowing it is, um, when you open up and receive all of the guidance information, you can receive healing, you can receive anything through that chakra. That's an antenna. Another antenna is your third eye, your clairvoyance. So clear seeing. Okay. So um, how sensitive is that for you or clear audience in your ears to hear how sensitive is that? So some people have not and everyone has these antennas. And then the, the last one is clairsentience in your solar plexus. And that's your clear feeling where you can feel your way through the situation. Um, so really depending on every single person has these antennas, but how sensitive are they? And if you do not feel like yours are working, or maybe one is working and then the others aren't, you could just have maybe some blocks within those centers, right? Emotional blocks. Um, religious blocks. Do you know how many people come to me because they want to clear their third eye? And what do I find in it? Always like 90, maybe 90% of the time, the block is caused from religious fear. So somebody being, a, being um, scared out of their gifts, being told again, like we were saying at the beginning of this, it's kind of all coming full circle, how religion says that they're evil, right? So by you hearing that as a young kid, it's going to create blocks, of course, by you believing that it's going to hold the block there. So everyone has the antennas. It's how clear they are, how much you've used them, how you practice with them, how you recognize them. There are also many people out there that are experiencing psychic gifts all the time, but they just don't know. They don't know that that's what it is because they think it should be this huge, like very obvious, like blast in the face, having like a vision from God and psychic gifts are not like that at the beginning. They're very subtle. They're very subtle. And then the more you work with them, the more like powerful and obvious they become. So again, you are like a radio with these different antennas. And depending on how sensitive those antennas are, it depends how many realms you could tune into. So even if you were, you know, um, I want to use like the spirit realm as an example. So we know that the spirit realm exists. That's like really the fourth dimension. The reason that it's higher than 3D is because it's non-physical. So 3D is very dense. Okay. So we're like these physical, heavy, very literal beings. Like it's, it's heavy. It's physical. We need to eat food. We need to sleep. Like, so a spirit would be higher frequency than that. 
because they are non-physical and do not have all those physical needs, but they're not like, you know, existing in like love yet, unconditional love and light and all of the good things that come as you go up in the realms. Um, So the fourth dimension is the spirit realm and it absolutely exists here on earth with us, but how many people can tune into it? Even though it's like completely overlaid on top of our reality, um, if you've ever read anything by Sylvia Brown, she talks a lot about how it's just a couple of feet above the third dimension. Like if our floor was here, theirs would just be here, but they're literally right there with us, existing with us, like truly here and now in this dimension or in this timeline with us, in on this planet with us, just in like a higher frequency, an invisible frequency, basically, right? So in that case. I mean, everybody's elevator would be able to make the stop to that place. However, how many antennas can actually pick up on it, its existence? So that's why like some people can sense um, spirit and ghosts and, and hauntings or loved ones coming back, like loved ones that have crossed over coming back for a visit. And that's also why like children and animals have an easier time with it because they are more pure. So their antennas are more pure and sensitive. Children are just that much closer to source. Like they've just, you know, begun their incarnation a couple of years ago. So they're still very much like connected to source, have that still within them. Like the further away you get from that, the older you get, the easier it is to kind of like lose touch with that. And then animals are just like egoless. So they're just pure. They can't tell us, but you know, like when your cat is seeing something that you're not seeing, like it's really obvious, right? So anyway, um, so, so this like is very interesting and leaves a lot of questions. It leaves a lot of questions, like how many realms are on earth? You know, like if we've got really dark realms here on earth, which, you know, I really believe that we do. And like, and we're giving those realms access to ourselves every time we go, go down in the elevator. Is that an earth realm that's that we're experiencing? Or is that some like something lower than earth and a demonic realm? Like, are these earth realms? I really want to know what the difference is between like, what is just on earth And is that what we're experiencing unless we're astral traveling and then we've got more freedom? Um, And then I also want to ask about, so what I want to know is like the golden eras that have happened on earth. So every 24,000 years, we come up to a golden era. We have 12,000 years of descension, 12,000 years of ascension. And then there's this golden era at the top. There's the dark ages at the bottom too, though. So it's balanced, right? Earth continues to cycle through this. 24,000 year cycle. The last golden era was Avalon, which was the elemental realm, like what you're seeing behind me, like unicorns, dragons, fairies. It was kind of like a medieval style realm. There were dragons, there was all of this. And that was here on earth. Um, But like, you know, almost 24,000 years ago, we're not quite in a golden era yet. So a little less than that. And then the one before that was Atlantis. And then the one before that was Lemuria. From what I understand, those are the last three. I'm sure there's lots before that, but I just don't know what they were. Um, So if those realms existed here on earth, where did they go? And I've kind of like started to realize, I think I've talked about this in a video before that, that elemental realm of Avalon, it didn't go anywhere. Like, I feel like it, it still exists, but where is it? Can we just not access it because we're not of that same frequency? Or is this a timeline thing where maybe, you know, it was a golden era. And then as earth started to go back down into like a dark age, did it just make a parallel move? And like, because I know that it still exists. So I'm just trying to figure out where it is. Is it still here on earth? Did it make a parallel move and it's existing in some other parallel universe now, but still in the high frequencies. And in that case, then We've got still Atlantis and Lemuria all still in existence, but we're here. Can we still access that? Will Earth ever be able to access that again? Or when we come into a golden age this time, will it just be something completely different? Is there any way to really visit Avalon again, to go back there as a human? You know, I know that we can astral travel anywhere, which is so it's a gift as well. It's another psychic gift. Yes. Astral travel is a psychic gift because you use every single psychic center to do it. You have to use your third eye, your clear audience, your clear cognizance, your clear, you use all of the clairs 
to complete that, to do the astral travel. And again, this is another thing that I'm teaching in this psychic light training course. I'm teaching all of the psychic gifts, including astral travel and channeling, because channeling is also a psychic gift. Same reason, because you're using your psychic tools to do it, right? So yeah, so this is where I want to like get some information. So this is basically now where I'm at in, in my notes here that I'm looking at is like, we're at the question part now where I'm like, well, can we enter into these realms or is this a timeline thing? And I can't access other timelines because that would go against like the rules of like or the organization of the universe. Like you can't just visit whatever timeline you feel like, cause then you would see yourself. And then, you know, we've all seen those movies where you can't travel in time without creating chaos. Um, but where do these realms on earth end? And when does it become something that you have to astrally travel to? And when is it something that we physically can achieve as a human here on earth? So which realms does earth have access to? So I don't know, basically just a ton of questions. So before we channel, maybe like check in with yourself um, and even put that, put this in the comments. If you want, like, what do you believe? Like before we go digging for answers together and I'll invite you to do that with me, what do you believe? Do you believe that Avalon is still here on earth? Do you believe that Atlantis is still here on earth? Or do you think that they don't even exist at all anymore? Or do you think that they exist, but in some other time, like it, in maybe a parallel universe or in, in this universe, but a different timeline or version of it? I don't really know. I, I, I don't know. And I'm very excited about what will come through. Because this is something that is it's big and it's, it's big to wrap your mind around this, but the elevator illustration makes so much sense. And I've seen it at play for myself needing to like rise back up to get out of the darkness. And then the radio antennas, the frequencies that we can connect with makes a lot of sense. And so in that case, it would be about how sensitive you are. If you could even just like, access that realm or even know that it was there, like even sense it at all. Right. So, I mean, basically I'm just viewing these like different realms of earth, like layers. And I know that we've got a dark realm, the, the physical realm of our waking day, the astral realm of the spirits and the ghosts, and then higher realms of love and connection and a new earth that we're trying to create. Is that I mean, is that pretty much what there is? Or is there also the potential for us to access things like Avalon or Atlantis or something like that? So I'm going to channel with you now. I invite you to join me and we'll see what comes through. Um, and for you to also open up and receive and share what you receive. Because like I said, channeling is, it's not some special thing that only certain people can do. We can all do it. Um, and for you to receive, it's very important for you to set up the, 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 um, like spiritual, um, oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like maintenance basically, or like hygiene, spiritual hygiene. Like you always want to make sure that you're always connected to the light before you do stuff like this. So before I started this video, I did meditate, but we'll just do a quick one together. Cause I want you to join me with this and, and show yourself, prove to yourself, like how you can channel as well. And you'll see what comes through for you. So let's start together with hands over heart. And we're going to take three deep breaths together. <sighs> Just centering our energy. And I like to visualize my crown chakra spiraling upwards, going all the way through the ceiling of the home that I'm in, through the roof, up through the sky and the clouds, past Earth's atmosphere through the stars, past all the stars and planets of the Milky Way, going to the edge of the universe where the doorway to God source is and going through that door of light and then asking God source, please anchor me here in your light. Anchor me in divine truth. Let everything that comes through in this channeling session be of divine origins. Let it be true and of the light. And please let it be specific and detailed. 
to help us answer our questions. And then you can also go an extra step and visualize your root chakra spiraling downwards in the opposite direction through the layers of the earth, that red light going down, 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 all the way to the hollow core of earth and meeting Gaia there and asking Gaia, please anchor us into this grounded space with you, anchor us into your protection. And Gaia, please send up through our connection any information or guidance that can help us. And then I also ask the angels, Archangel Michael, Raphael, Haniel, to surround us all with a golden cocoon of high frequency energy to hold us in those high frequencies because you need to be in a high frequency in order to connect. So if we're asking for information from God's source or from a higher being like an angel or a galactic being, then we need to meet that information and that being where they're at. So we ask, please raise up our frequency to unconditional love, to love and light, to purity, to divine truth, and hold us here in this very high frequency throughout this channeling session in this cocoon of light. And we thank you. Awesome. So then when you go to channel, you could just ask to connect whom, to whomever you would like. So I'm going to start with source and see how that goes. So I'm going to ask God source, Baba, please come through with some information about earth realms. And let's talk about the elemental realm. And if that still exists here on earth. So I'm the first thing that I saw was an elemental planet. And I'm seeing like it was originally Earth, and then it hit this golden era, and the ele this was Avalon. Okay, so this was like the elemental realm, so this was our last golden era, and then it flourished all over the Earth, and the that entire version of Earth became Avalon. So Avalon is like a whole planet then. Okay, and now I'm hearing Avalon is very physical and real. So what maybe what I'm trying to view as like a realm is not, is that, okay, let me just see what's happening here. Okay, so now I'm seeing like multiple different earths all kind of circulating together and they're all real. And it has to do with, it does have to do with like the time that we're in, I think. Because I'm seeing, like visually, I'm seeing our earth in the center, how it is now, how we would see it now. And then around it are all of these other earths spinning around it. They're spinning and then they're also spinning around it, um, circulating this earth right now. And all of those earths, globes, are representations of the worlds that earth has become in the past if we use time to make things simpler so there's an avalon version of earth there is an atlantis version of earth there is a lemuria it's a version of earth because it completely overtook that entire planet And I'm hearing, because I, so here's where the confusion is for me. It's like, okay, but are they physical planets or not? Because I heard that they're very physical and very real. And I'm hearing like Earth birthed these versions. Like it, it's all very mysterious. It's like our Earth that we're in now birthed these other versions of itself. They came from Earth. So the visual, I keep getting the same visual, so I'll just describe it. It's like there's this, the Earth that we're in, and then it like splits off, and then there's one here, splits off, and then there's one here, splits off, and then, and they are all very real, but they came from this one. Like a copy in a way. 
And like, I know that we talk about how earth is a simulation a lot. And we talk about how it's full of programs and things can be deleted and things can be reinstalled. Things can be upgraded. Things can be copied too. Which is just a little bit mind blowing for me right now because because again this is very it's very real though it's a, it's an actual planet and it's like but then why can't we see it like we've seen all seen things of like outer space there's not a bunch of Earths around our Earth so like how is it physical it would make so much more sense if these were just energetic realms because then we could be like well you have to like align to its frequency to see it. But what I heard was that they're very real globes and worlds with people and everything that continued on. And like the, and that makes sense because like you can find evidence of those worlds here on this planet because they were here originally. So like people finding evidence of, I don't know what, like Noah's Ark or Atlantis, or I mean, different realms, different worlds, finding the evidence of it here. But at a certain point, it split off. It split off. So, I mean, maybe I don't have the language to like scientifically explain to you how this is possible. All I can tell you is that I'm seeing that these are very real worlds. So now I'm going to ask um, a specific question here from, from God source again, and, and we can move on and ask someone else in a bit, but we'll just see where this continues to go. Specifically, I want to know like, why can't we see if there are all of these earth globes, versions of earth still in existence, then why can't we see them? I was seeing a bunch of stuff that was very scientific. Like I saw like a sign, like, cause I said, why can't we see them? And then I heard the answer, like you, you could with the proper tools of it. And then I saw like, I don't know, all of these like sciencey style tools, like, I don't know, microscopes and different things that I don't understand. Um, and then I, I kind of felt like I was hearing or leaning into the understanding of like string theory coming into play here. And I think like, I don't know very much about string theory. So I really hope that someone watching this is going to be able to fill in a lot of these blanks for us in the comments, which would be so helpful. And thank you so much. But I know that in like with string theory, there's a lot of things that like wink in and out of existence. And then that's also where parallel universes came from. Okay. Okay, so then when I said parallel universes, I saw this, and that's always my sign for you're on the right track. So I saw like spirit do this. So, okay, so with each golden era, a parallel universe is created. So you know how every time we say, and you've probably heard this, every time you make a decision, you create a new reality, like, because there is a a, a universe or a timeline or a parallel universe, whatever you want to call it for every single decision that you could make, they all exist, but they all exist simultaneously, but they're all very real and physical. This is the same thing. So like every time earth enters into a golden era, that golden era spawns a parallel version of that earth. And it does continue to exist as a, a true world, a true globe, a physical thing with these beautiful like style beings. Um, so can you travel? But so then I guess the question is like, how do you sense parallel universes and can you travel to them? Because if they are very real and physical and we are, then what would it take to get there? Is it literally space travel? When I asked that, I heard it was more like time travel. It is. So it is like time travel. So it's not space travel. It's it's time travel. 
this is so intricate, right? Like how confusing is this? And we just started off talking so simply about like what realms exist on earth. And now this is about parallel universes and like time travel. Um, okay. So, so the only way, like, I'm just going to say what I'm hearing. So the only way to visit, so Atlantis is what I'm getting as an example. So the only way to visit Atlantis would be within like this incarnation as Jenny, I would have to astrally go there. If I wanted to go like visit physically, then I would need to be born into it. So I would need to choose like when I'm in the in-between, in-between incarnations, lifetimes, I would want, I would have to choose it. And then I just heard, and you would have to choose which Atlantis there are. Okay. So basically like the universe is this infinite, like super expansive, like continuing to expand place. There are infinite worlds that are earth styled there's not just one Atlantis. There's many Atlantises with the different outcomes that still exist within different frequencies. There are lots of different Avalons that exist within different frequencies because that planet had many potential futures. I mean, and we've heard of the potential futures of Atlantis. And this is why it gets confusing because some people are like, no, Atlantis died or it exploded or it sunk or whatever. Probably in some in some future endings it did but there are ones because I have seen it like when I am traveling for people to do readings and stuff and I'm like tuning into these other realms that's this is how I know they're real and they exist and that Atlantis continues to exist as a city like I've seen it it's not it didn't sink I know that it's still there but what I'm understanding or hearing now from source is and I know that source is really trying to simplify things for me because I don't have the scientific background and it's so huge anyway even if you did but it's like not not only does Atlantis exist as a planet that used to be like called earth which would now just probably be called Atlantis but there's multiple versions of that even but that doesn't mean it's the spirit realm or it's non-physical it's very real and so like parallel universes, we kind of talked a little bit, a bit about them in the um, Grand Central Sun video, the last video, we talked about how traveling the sun were portals and traveling through the suns could take you to these parallel universes. It kind of does add on like this kind of ties together then because the Grand Central Sun, the one at the very center of the universe is the greatest portal of worlds like you can go through and choose like where you're going to to go um but truly to be a part of one of those worlds you would have to choose to incarnate into it or astrally i mean when you get good at astral traveling and you practice it it is very real you would still be able to truly visit see the sites and 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 have a real experience if you wanted to visit Atlantis you could still do that and you would have to choose which one you wanted to visit I mean there's there's so much to it so I uh, really was hoping for like a very straightforward answer for you guys because I kind of just like wrote down these notes really quickly and I thought we were going to get this like um, very straightforward answer about like the realms that are on earth but it's like earth is birthing new worlds that are versions of itself that are parallel universes that are very real and physical that you can actually visit or be born into or potentially some beings that are um have clearance maybe to do so could actually like travel through the grand central sun which is a portal to parallel universes and maybe there's a world of atlantis where they have increase their tech understanding so far that they could even possibly do that because i do think that there are civilizations that have um i mean we know that there are civilizations that have figured out things like time travel and portals and parallel universes right so you would need to do something like that to visit it so no it's not like the elevator that i was thinking about before is not going to take you to atlantis here on earth Though you can astrally travel to it, the elevator is more about the realms that are on Earth here and now. So let's find out more about those then. And hopefully you're staying with me through a lot of this because um, I know that it's like very complicated. But the realms that we were talking about, just as a reminder, were like some kind of a darker, dark entity realm. And then our physical waking day 
and then the spirit realm, and then like the new earth kind of realm, the higher like love and connection realm. So let's ask about that then. Cause like, obviously like these golden era worlds, like Avalon and Atlantis and all of them have birthed off into their own versions of earth at this point. So we can visit in different ways, but not like, I can't physically go there. Like as Jenny, I can't physically go there. I can astrally go there or I can incarnate there in my next life. Or maybe if this earth progresses really far, we will have the technology to understand traveling to parallel universes. Okay, so let's ask about then, uh, we as the elevator, what can we visit with our frequency going up and down? So then when I asked that question, I saw a spirit as an elevator. And what I was being told was that astral travel also, that also connects to astral travel. So you are still the elevator, whether you are in your physical body or not, because the elevator is your energy and the soul. So I need to stop thinking about like my physical body as the elevator and realize that it actually is my soul, my consciousness, my state of being, my emotions, which are non-physical, right? So it actually does not have to do with the physical me. It has to do, the elevator illustration has to do with my energy. So if I am in my body or not in my body, it doesn't necessarily matter. So the elevator will take me to lower worlds when I am in a lower state medium worlds, neutral worlds when I'm in a neutral state, and higher worlds when I'm in a higher state. So the elevator has nothing to do with physical self. So what does have to do with physical self then? Like what, where does the physical body and these realms connect? What's the key there? So in that case, it looks like the psychic senses are the key there because without the antennas to like pick up on those worlds, then you wouldn't even know that you were visiting them. So like the physical self and the energy body and the soul and all that, the connection between them, like where the soul connects to the human body within you, like where is that connection? A lot of that is your psychic gifts. That's how your soul or non-physical environments can communicate with your physical self, right? You can see, you can hear. A psychic gifts can be very physical. You can literally hear a, a, a physical voice, a bell, music, you can receive goosebumps all over your body. That's a physical symptom of a psychic experience or of an energetic realm. Okay, so the way that the physical body comes into play with these realms is that the proof of it will be in the sensations that you experience. So that does make sense because when you, if you want to keep using the lower realms as an example, when you go into those lower realms, you do experience physical sensations like fear, panic, anxiety, like all those feelings were like, why am I feeling all this? That's the physical sensations of you being in a realm that maybe you don't even know you're in because you can't sense it because your antennas aren't strong enough for you to actually see it, interact with it, but your physical body is still giving you signals that that's where you are. Okay. So again, the layers, I'm just trying to like connect in now with God source to describe those layers a little bit cleaner. Okay, so then the visual that I got was like earth, this round earth, like our globe, and then the layers going all the way down like this and earth just having like this much. So the layers don't stop. They're just like layers, 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 layers. And then some of them are touching earth and then some of them are below earth and it just has nothing. I mean, earth is just right here in the middle. So all that we can physically experience if we have like our... our like psychic, you can experience more if your psychic gifts are more sensitive, but everybody can experience a little bit of something in the ones that are right here. Between all of these layers, the ones that go over earth are going to be those like, um, what do I want to call that? So the darker realms on earth, 
um, would be dark entities and dark humans because it's really about the soul. It's not about whether they're physical or non-physical. It's about the soul and the intention. So there are dark people. There are dark entities. There are dark. I mean, there's dark energy in many things. So there is a dark realm. We'll just call it the dark realm then. And that's where like violence, abuse, um, depression, all of that exists. So the physical humans that connect with that or, you know, really feel at home, there are going to stay there. And you know that when you come across a person that's like, ooh, they give you bad vibes. That's where they're comfortable. And then they're going to be like, um, living alongside like dark entities and, and all those dark things like we're talking about even like disease like dark things like that that all kind of congregate or are attracted to um sickness violence um hurting people taking advantage all of those kinds of things and then there's and then you come up and there's every every degree of gray like you know it doesn't just go from black to gray to white there's all of these degrees of it like the layers are not thick. They're super thin, right? So there's so many. And then you come up into eventually into like neutrality, which would be people pretty much like on autopilot a lot of the time, um, not experiencing a lot of ups and downs, just kind of like neutral autopilot, zoned out. A lot of TV watching happens here. A lot of addiction might happen in here and lower. I mean, just whatever it is to like escape, zone out, neutral. And then as you're coming up, then you're going to start hitting into people that are concerned about their health, taking care of themselves and their bodies. And then all of the like, and then higher and higher, like wanting to be of service to others, like at the highest, that's the highest. So service to self, service to others, and then like everything in between. Um, but all along the way, in all of these super thin layers of gray, of these realms that are available here on earth that are energetic and physical because energetic beings and physical beings are attracted to them and living inside each one. Humans live inside each one of these animals live inside each one of these entities or, or uh, non-physical beings live inside each one of these. Right. So many of, so like a neutral astral being would be like, maybe like a harmless ghost you know, that's very different than a dark entity. And I mean, these are just one example. There's probably hundreds of different kinds of um, non-physical beings living on the earth, more than hundreds, thousands, right? Um, and then up in the higher ones, then you're going to have like your ancestors that are trying to help you on your, on your path. And they are super like interested in being of service to you. And they're going to like rate up in the higher vibrational realms. And so you're always choosing what you're interacting with. You're always choosing what you're interacting with when you're here on earth. And then outside of your physical self, all of this is available to you. And now you're astral traveling. Maybe you're in a really bad nightmare realm. Maybe you're in a beautiful heavenly angelic realm. Everything, there's nothing held back from you in that state. You are able to travel anywhere. And astral travel is a gift. Like I said before, it is so beautiful. It is like, um, the way that we do our soul work a lot of the time. So many of us have missions that we do as the soul and we have to be able to astral travel to complete those missions. Many of us have meetings like with our guidance counselors, if you want to call them that at the Galactic Federation of Light or wherever it is that you're being called to go and have a meeting with your team and your guides. You need to be able to astral travel to do all of those things. And astral travel is natural for the soul. You're doing it whether you realize it or not. As soon as you fall asleep at night, your soul doesn't just lay around and do nothing. It doesn't sleep. It goes off, right? It goes off into these other realms. So the powerful thing about learning how to astral travel is to intentionally choose what you want to do, or at least be able to remember and know what you're up to, right? And like a great tip for that, I mean, outside of all of the stuff that I'm going to be teaching in this course, a really great tip for the remembering part is to take a clear crystal, like clear quartz, selenite, selenite's really powerful for this, and to sleep with it in your hand, especially up near your, your crown chakra. I find it really like powerful if it's up near like my, um, my head. 
up in this area. So if I sleep with it near my head or under my pillow or whatever, I remember so much more. So if you're trying to remember your dreams, your astral travels, all of that, try taking a nice pointed clear stone, selenite or clear quartz and placing that in your hand near your head or under your pillow. And you'll be able to remember more of that. So, so I don't know. Um, you know, really, if everything got answered, I mean, in, in a way that does answer everything, because it's like the other realms, the golden eras here on earth, continue to exist on the earth that they were on, which is a different earth than the one that we're on. And these are all like, just parallel universes. But I do see us all birthing from one main earth structure almost like a program, like if we're back to like computer programs, like a main program that births all these versions of itself, right? Like, you know, when like software updates, it's like version 2.0, version 3.0, like it's versions, like really using like computer language is the best way to understand this. Um, Copies and versions, you could think of it like that. We will eventually be one of those, okay? Because we're coming up to this time on earth after all this nonsense of this purge and the dark night of the soul, where we will be in a golden era and we will also become a version. And then this purity of earth will start again. Because as it goes back down into the dark age, that it does 12,000 years of descension back into a dark age, it's like a reset when it goes back into the dark ages and then we rebirth a new program and there's like all of these earths everywhere all of these different versions of earth that we can visit astrally that we can tune into with our psychic gifts we can channel information from them we can go and visit and all of that we could probably choose if we wanted to incarnate into one of them or maybe there are civilizations with the technology to literally go and visit these parallel versions of earth And the really huge, amazing thing is this is, it's not just happening with earth. It's happening with like, how many planets is there life on? I mean, I don't know, but like billions, it's happening with all of them. Like this earth, this universe is so multidimensional, so layered with parallel versions of itself. All those layers we saw, all the grays, like just like such thin layers that there's so many. And then on top of that, the earth continues to expand and expand and expand and get bigger. It just keeps getting bigger and getting more filled with versions and parallel things. It's just, you could be a soul and have billions of lifetimes and still probably never visit all of these places. It's crazy. It's incredible, which is probably why God source has so many souls, all of us, so that it can experience as much as possible through each one of us. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I know that this was really deep. It wasn't, I was not expecting it to be a super deep video. I was kind of just like really excited, but like the elevator illustration and like describing to you how I like bring myself back up and how I know that I've come down in the elevator when I start experiencing those things and then, but look at what it became. So you can't, you can't control what comes through when you connect to something as grand a source with all of its information. Um, so I will stop here because it's so much to digest and, um, and probably need to rewatch this myself <laughs> to really kind of grasp everything that was said because there was so much, but truly all of it does fit together it's just a it's like a lot bigger than what like maybe our human minds can comprehend much of the time and again very much like the grand central sun video like a lot of this is just it's hard to grasp because we're like in this small existence where we just have like morning afternoon evening night i mean we just have this simple timeline and we don't understand how layered true existence is so this is going to be so fun to check out your comments on because I mean, really, what do you, what are you going to say to add on to this? Like, I can't wait. It'll probably be stuff that blows my mind. Um, because you all, I invited you all to just kind of channel with me in that experience. So what did you receive or what like struck home for you? What resonated for you or where does this lead to just more questions? And of course, how could it not? I mean, that's how intricate it is. It's just going to lead to more and more learning and learning and learning. So I love you all so much. Please remember that um, you still have time to get in the course um, psychic light training starseed Academy's first 
opportunity for you to enroll as a student is here, and it's this course. We will be learning claircognizance, clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, going very in-depth into these four things, plus learning channeling, plus learning astral travel. So if you want to, um, first of all, though that is the toolkit that every awakened soul needs in order to complete their earth mission, you truly do need these things. Um, and if you are ready for that and to kind of like kick your spirituality into the next gear, like the next level with it and going much more in depth with it, then please just click on the link in the description of this video. Just check it out, read about what's involved and see if it sounds like something that really resonates for you or that you're interested in. And if you're watching this, I mean, if you're interested in this channel and you're still here at the end of this video, which is probably super long by now, then you are definitely the right kind of person for this course. So I'm so excited. I think we have quite a few people signed up already and I'm looking so forward to really working closely with you all and going very in depth into these things and really unlocking things for you. It's going to be all about unlocking, activating safely, as you learn how to do this for yourself and like leaving that six week course at the end, like a new version of yourself, because how could you not be when we unlock all of that? It's going to be so powerful. So I love you all. Thank you so much for being here and for sticking around. Um, you can catch me over on Instagram. So come check me out over there for other kinds of information and content. And other than that, I look forward to reading your comments and I'll talk to y'all soon. And always remember, listen to your heart and the quiet voice within, because you are so much more than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful star seeds. Talk to you soon. Bye.